Coach Sanderson, welcome back to Tuscaloosa. I hope you're doing well, sir. I'm doing fine. Thank you. Uh, Coach, uh, you're counting down the minutes to Alabama basketball here? Well, I um, certainly will watch the game. I'm watching Kentucky and LSU right now, as well as a little bit of South Carolina and Missouri. So, sure, I'll watch the game starting at 8 o'clock. I I don't count down the minutes particularly, but I'll watch it. Uh, Coach, uh, before we get our little conversation started talking about basketball uh, in this state and and around the Southeastern Conference, uh, let's go back and talk about Dean Smith. Uh, Okay. uh, Losing a legend that meant a lot to Alabama basketball. I'd like to hear your thoughts. Well, Sonny, he was not only a great person, I I liked Dean a great deal, but but, what a little I knew him. I knew him a little bit. uh, And he uh, was a real innovator. He's the first one to start the huddle at the free throw. He was uh, the first one to be sure that his players, when they received a pass from somebody, they pointed to the guy who passed it to them to acknowledge that pass and to thank him for it. He was one of the first ones where everybody stood up on the bench when a team substitute, substituted. One of their players came off. They stood up and clapped for him. Naturally, he was uh, probably the innovator, not the innovator, but the one that caused the 45 second clock back then and they went to the four corners which is a really a very highly skilled offense people that don't understand basketball didn't like it they thought slow down the game but actually it was a part of the of the game where they really controlled the tempo and got the ball to an open man inside so you know the 45 second rule all those other things i've mentioned he he uh, had a big part in already started those uh his teams were very hard to prepare for uh, the last game I lost at Alabama was to Dean Smith's team. We did beat them here in Tuscaloosa um, one year with, with uh, when they had a very good team. And when I was an assistant coach, uh, we beat them about 16 points in Dayton uh, uh, in I guess 76 or three to go to the NCAA, uh, going to the final I guess 16. So we had a great team back then, Leon Douglas and T.R. Dunn. So. He was a heck of a guy. I thought uh, a guy that um, I think cared a lot about people. He was one of these that uh, he didn't show his emotions. I know he marched uh, with the marchers against the Vietnam War. Uh, he uh, was certainly a person that that uh, felt for the minorities that they needed a chance to play. Uh, Charlie Scott was somebody that he was recruiting when he was, I think he was the uh, I think Dean may have been an assistant then. I'm not sure, but he um, he certainly was big on, on the minorities having a chance. So he was a heck of a guy. Coach, uh, I go back, and you were talking about beating him in Tuscaloosa. Was that the game yeah. that uh, you scored 100 points in? I think 101. I think we did. Yeah, he had signed Peter Chilcutt, which is a disappointment to me because we thought we were going to get Peter. He was down in Utah, and Peter came from a divided family, and uh, the dad – Worked at the university, but it was his stepdad, and we never could make much headway there. Or I guess you could say North Carolina did a better job. Than, but if maybe Peter wanted to get away. I'm not sure. You have to ask him. But uh, he called and said, you know, when if I'd like to bring our team back and I'd like to bring back Peter for his senior season. I said, that would be fine. We'd be glad to play you. And they did. And we had uh, we had a very good basketball team and, and a good game. We got ready. Our packed crowd and and we won the basketball game 100 and, I don't know what it was, 102 or something in the ice. Coach, when I go back and, and look at your success, and, and I, I don't know if you do this, uh, we do it as we go back and try to find the recipe uh, for how you had so much success in Tuscaloosa. Uh, Ten NCAA tournament uh, bursts, uh, making the Sweet 16 six times, Cole McCollison, an electric atmosphere, the way that you packed the house – what did you do right? What What was the key well, thing? Well, we that... started off. I, you know, we started off. I, I think, and we started and ended with good players. And you have to have good basketball players that are willing to play hard every night. We were fortunate enough that we had some players in the state. Uh, I had I had recruited for two other coaches. I had good assistant coaches who worked very hard. Greg Polinski, and Kevin Gray, and a lot of guys. Uh, David David uh, Hobbs. So. You know, we had we had a good staff, and, and we, we worked very hard, and we kind of lucked into the plaid thing. It was a little bit of a – happened to wear it one time, and the media wrote about it. So we started trying to 
to use it a little bit. It was uh, the only problem with the plaid part of it was that it, you know, it, it put too much attention on me rather than on our players. Need be more attention on our players. However, as we went along and began to use it some, began to continue to win more games, you know, people became, you know, wanted to wear a plaid and do that kind of thing. So we looked at, looked into that a little bit, uh, but we but. It's like any basketball program. You've got to have good players in order to be successful, and and we had good players, and fortunate, we were fortunate enough to to get them to play at a level that gave us a chance to win. Coach, uh, as I go back, was that your personality, or is that somebody that you developed in? I mean, I I, I did my research. Well, I don't know. You know, I, I did a radio show with Sonny Smith, and he said I didn't have a personality, so it couldn't have been my personality. <laughs> Uh, Sonny and I used to have a big time. He said, well, you don't have a personality. So maybe I did. I don't know. I think everybody coaches sort of the way that maybe the coaches their personality, the way they feel like is the best way, or just the way they are. And so I, I think that's fine. Everybody does things a little bit different. We try to play. I think, I think you have to play exciting basketball in order to get the fans to come out. Uh, let me tell you something. Fans like. They like fast break basketball, a lot of dunks. They like a lot of home runs in baseball, and they like a lot of passes in football. That's just the way fans are. If you took the average fan who, who came to all the games, they're not a really big big basketball fan. They don't know a great deal about it. They know some about it, but not. But they know they decide whether it's enjoyable or not when the game is over. And if the game was enjoyable. Uh, naturally, if we won, it was much more enjoyable. Uh, but, um, you know, we just tried to do things in a way and coached uh, what we felt like was probably overdid a little bit. I mean, my demeanor on the bench probably wasn't as, as good as it should have been. But, uh, you know, it, it was uh, it's a period of time where, you know, too, when you're winning big, people have a tendency to come out and and – we won fairly big, and people had a tendency to come out to see us. Coach, uh, what is the state of uh, of SEC basketball right now? Do you think it's trending up? I think it's better. Yeah, I do. I think it's, I think it's improved some. It's not there yet. Uh, we'll have um, three or four teams in the NCAA. I don't think we'll have over four. Uh, three or four, perhaps four. Um, and certainly we have. And I think the other thing, too, that people forget now, that we've had SEC teams in the final in the championship games, Florida two or three times, one in the championship, Kentucky's winning. You know, our league has presented uh, the NCAA with a national champion in basketball. You know, the people who want to knock basketball say, yeah, but it's only Kentucky and Florida, but that doesn't make a difference. Um, you know, I don't see, you know, I don't see the other school, uh, uh, the other leagues having that. So, a league has has been a little bit down. Maybe you want to say that, or maybe not as competitive as it needs to be. But uh, I think it's made some progress this year. I think it's gotten better. We had some big wins against Oklahoma State. Um, you know, you know, uh, Iowa State. We've had some good wins by the by the league. So I, I think to answer your question, uh, I think the league is getting better. I think the league league is improved. You know, the one and done thing is is a very difficult thing. Coach, uh, let's analyze Kentucky for a couple of minutes. Undefeated, twenty-three and zero right now. Yeah. They're handing LSU fifty-five to forty-four uh, in right. the second half in that game. Uh, what do you think about the Kentucky Wildcats? This a uh, well, I think it's a terrific basketball team, and here's the reason: it's terrific. They're loaded with depth, very good quality depth. You know, when we had our good teams, uh, even when Kentucky had theirs and LSU and Georgia, whoever. We had good players, but we didn't have the, we didn't have the depth that this Kentucky team does. This Kentucky team, number eight and number nine, are very very good. So they've got very talented depth. That's the first thing. And secondly, they defend. They're not one of these basketball teams that's selfish. that tries to, you know, not really play together. They've been surprising to me the way they have the chemistry that they've shown playing together as new guys coming from different sections of the country. They've sort of banded together. I've really been surprised to see them play so well together on the offensive end. And Cal has got them playing very hard defensively and very well defensively. And and I think the interesting thing about them, 
is that they, that they give you good effort every night. You know something? The better the player is, and I had some teams with two or three really good players. Everybody, if you saw, we had about 10 or 12, but we did. Uh, so with, with two or three, it, it's hard sometimes to get those guys to play hard every night. It just is. This basketball team in Kentucky has is playing hard every night. I, somebody asked me last night if if uh, thought they thought LSU would beat Kentucky. I said not in a hundred years. LSU doesn't defend that well. They're not going to beat Kentucky, and uh, so this Kentucky team has. Even though I'm not, you know, didn't grow up a big Kentucky fan, we tried to beat them. They have to have a lot of that. that they should be given a lot of credit. Coach, as I work our way right now, we're Coach uh, Wimp Sanderson right now inside the game here in Tuscaloosa on Tide 99-1. Uh, do you think Alabama's getting better? You, you, you think- I, think it, I think they were getting better. I don't know I don't know now that they, uh, you know, these injuries that they have, I don't know how many guys they're going to have tonight. They've had a, they've had a lot of injuries. Uh, they haven't played it well every night. I think this basketball team is better than last year's team. Uh, it's still been a struggle. I, one of the problems I think that they've had is that they're a little bit underskilled inside. Uh, the three-point shots, the good three-point shots, come from two things. Shooting a three-point shot on the fast break when the defense doesn't get back, get back, get back, or throwing it inside where the defense collapses and you throw it back to the other side. They don't really have a, a real skilled player, and this is not taking anything away from Jimmy Taylor. He's giving good effort, blocking a lot of shots, doing a lot of things well. But they're not as skilled inside passing the basketball out of the inside uh, as some of the other Alabama teams. To answer your question, I think before the injuries, they were better than last year. Right now, I think the jury is still out as to how they're going to be able to do uh, the last eight games. Coach, what is fair expectations of Alabama basketball year in and year out? I think fair expectations are, are, are twofold. I think that the fair expectations is for you to go to the game as a, as a fan and come out of there feeling like that your basketball team had good players. They played really hard. Uh, they won a lot of them, but they were very, very good. You lost them last shot or whatever, which they, like they did against Florida. And, and you got into the NCAA some. You know, you don't get into the NCAA every year, uh, but, you, but you got in on a, uh, on a, you know, a decent amount of times. I think the thing that, that maybe fans don't understand is that, you know, we should do this and we should do that and we should do this. Let me tell you something. The other 13 schools are saying the same thing. We should do this and we should do that and our team should do this. And football the same way. Uh, so everybody else is recruiting hard. Everybody else is trying to get their guys to play hard. It's not easy, and it uh, and you take you have to take. I think the football atmosphere that you have at Alabama, which is uh, and loves to, and you have to take that football atmosphere and you have to do everything you can to use it, to use that to your advantage, to make. You know, so whatever, uh, in my particular case with Coach Bryant there, we tried to ask Coach Bryant to do what he could to help us, maybe meet a player, meet a family, uh, something like that, call a player occasionally for me uh, to let them know that we were trying to have a good basketball program. Probably probably like that with Nick Saban as well, since he has the same, you know, type of uh, ability or reputation that Coach Bryant had, so... You know, I, I would think the expectations are to, to see that your team play really hard, you know, get towards the top of the league as best you can and get to the NCAA some. Is it harder at, at a place like Alabama because football is given so much attention? Well, I don't know. That. I, I think it, 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 I think what you do is this. You, you try to get the best players in your state, and hopefully you try to evaluate them and get that. It's not, it's not easy. It's Certainly easier at at Kentucky uh, than it is it is uh, at Alabama. But you try to get the very best players in your state, and then you try to get somebody else around the area that's 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 good that you think can play for you, and it can it can meet the expectations that you want for your team. So is it is it harder? Oh, it's not easy. Basketball recruiting is is a is a difficult thing. Here's your problem. 
when I was a coach for other for two other coaches before I got the job, and when I got the job, uh, we had freshman teams for a lot for a long time. So when we said that when our basketball program was struggle one year, we said. Well, we got a couple of freshmen coming in next year. We're going to, I mean, a couple of freshmen that are going to be sophomores next year. They're going to really be good. Well, they don't have that now. The big, the biggest deal in, in college basketball today is that the women have 15 scholarships, the men have 13. That's stupid. That's ridiculous. The women, the men should have as many as the women. And we're doing that because of football, I guess, because of the numbers are different in football. And so, you know, in football, uh, we have 50, we used to have when Coach Bryant was there 55 scholarships. Today we have 25. Well, it's a little bit different for Nick and them in football. There's only 25, you know, 25 scholarships. So whoever you select, uh, you need to hopefully you can select the right ones. When you so if you make a mistake in a, in a numbers game, you might miss on two or three. But you make a mistake in a short numbers game like. In at Alabama, when you sign three in one year, and you happen to make a mistake on two of them, then you got yourself real problems if you do that two years in a row. I'm not saying that Alabama has. Alabama's got some good players, but it's you know you've got to be correct in order to keep your program at a high level. But coach, and and, and maybe a final question. Uh, talking to Coach Wim Sanders, the winningest Alabama uh, basketball coach in history. Uh, nobody did it better than Coach Wim Sanderson, selling the fans, promoting the program. Uh, coach, is it fair that the fans are calling for Anthony Grant's job as as this team continues to struggle in year well, number six? The, the one thing that then I'm on a lot of shows. The one thing that I don't do is I, I don't try to decide, you know, what the fans want and don't want from the position that I'm in. Sure. Uh, I, I don't do that. I, first, second of all, first of all, I don't coach. I don't coach this team. I, I had a very, very hard time coaching my team. I struggled coaching my team. So if I couldn't coach my team the way I wanted to, then I can't coach his. So, and I also have a real, you know, I, I don't really not say to listen. You hear that stuff, but you know, I, I don't. I don't know. I, I think that's for. The administration for the people in the higher spots that I'm in to to decide, you know, what's good and what's bad. Hopefully, he can get it going to the point that they that they turn the corner a little bit. But you know, I I don't make I don't make judgments against uh, coaches. I never have done that, and if I ever have done it, I, I certainly did by mistake or didn't didn't mean to because I don't really like to judge. Other problems, and, I, I, and you know, in, in the way they run their thing, I ran mine the way I think we should run it. I got criticized a great deal uh, because of the UAB thing. Uh, I didn't want to do this, but uh, it, it was my problem. It, it wasn't anybody else's; it was mine. And I'll, I'll run it the way I wanted to run it, regardless of what people wanted. You know, you need to do something well if it's good for basketball. You need to play UAB. I was doing something what was good for basketball. I, I liked what I was doing, and that's the way I that's that's what I did. So that's that's the kind of attitude I had. And I'm a little bit of a different kind of guy, I guess. But you know, that's that's my feelings. Well, coach, uh, and, and I'll just give you a uh, positive uh, interaction. Uh, as as I was <laughs> telling folks, uh, Coach Sanderson was going to be on with us tonight. Uh, you got a lot of fans, uh, and, and well, I appreciate and, it. And, and, uh, I, I mean, had I'm, some good years there, and I had. Uh, I had uh, one very disappointing year at the end of 1992. I won't get it, but uh, I had some good years there, and I enjoyed them. And I, I worked for two other coaches and and tried to do well, and tried to do well with with a good assistance at our places, good players and good trainers and managers. So, you know, we did what we thought was was best for basketball. I, I missed having the opportunity to coach there, but um, one of these days it'll 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 be what it is. Coach, uh, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate it. Uh, You're more welcome. Thank you.